Howard University Department of Biology Assistant Professor Michael C. Campbell and an international team of scientists led by members of Professor Tishkoff's lab at the University of Pennsylvania have identified new variants in or near the SLC24A5, MFSD12, DDB1, TMEM138, OCA2, and HERC2 genes that are responsible for skin color in modern humans. Unlike prior skin color research studies, which have focused on European subjects, the present study analyzed genetic data from a large set of 1,570 people from populations in very remote regions in Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Botswana, located in eastern and southern Africa making it the first of its kind. The individuals involved in this study practice different modes of subsistence and possess a broad spectrum of skin pigmentation present in Africa. Among the partnering local academic institutions were the University of Botswana, the University of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, and the Muhimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences in Tanzania. As part of the process of data collection, public meetings with local authorities, community members, translators, and the researchers from the University of Pennsylvania were held to ensure that participants were fully and properly informed about the nature of the study. The study also collected a range of phenotypic information, including skin melanin index, which is a measure of melanin content from over 2,000 ethnically and genetically diverse subjects. According to Professor Campbell, by analyzing both genetic and phenotypic information, researchers identified novel alleles, or variants, that explain approximately 30% of the skin pigmentation difference in African population, which is considered high for a human variant trait. My name is Oral Ofori. Join me as I sit down with Professor Campbell to chat about his recent research findings. Hello there. My name is Oral Ofori. Welcome to the African Dream. Today's show is coming to you from the Department of Biology of Howard University in Washington, D.C. Joining us on today's show is our special guest, Professor Michael C. Campbell. Professor Campbell is a biologist and an assistant professor at Howard University's Department of Biology. Professor, thank you for joining us today on the African Dream. We really appreciate it. All right. You participated in a study that led to the genetic discovery which challenges skin color as a characteristic of race. In simple and plain language, Professor, tell us, what was the study basically about? Well, we wanted to understand the genetic basis and evolutionary history of skin pigmentation in African populations. So African populations have been highly understudied in, um, in genetic studies, and so we wanted to um, better understand well, what is the underlying genetic basis of this particular trait? And so what we did was that we essentially went to different countries within Africa and sampled all of these different ethnic groups, and we measured um, their melanin index, meaning the amount of melanin content within their skin, and also we um, collected genetic information. And so we took those two bits of information, the the um, skin pigmentation information and the genetic information and try to understand the association between the two. So that way we had a, a better understanding or we attempted to understand well, what the underlying genetic basis of this particular trait was. And so what we found was that there were four genomic regions that are associated with skin pigmentation in African populations. And so one of the um, striking findings of this study is the fact that we, we have these alleles, and so these are genetic changes that we see in the sequence. So right. alleles or mutations or, or variants, and so these tend to be nucleotide changes within DNA sequence. And so what we found was that in some populations, you had um, these alleles that are associated with dark pigmentation that tend to be a higher frequency in populations that tend to have darker pigmented skin and alleles that are associated with lighter pigmentation tended to be at higher frequency in populations in Africa that have lighter pigmentation. So one example of a population that has lighter pigmentation would be the sand hunter-gatherers of southern Africa. Right. And so they tend to have the lightest pigmentation across the continent or within the continent. You didn't just randomly decide, I'm going to 
make my research around this particular subject? What gave rise to it? Well, this research was actually initiated when I was a postdoc at the University of Pennsylvania. And my mentor um, in the d Department of Genetics was very interested in normal variable traits in African populations. As I mentioned before, African populations have been highly understudied. And so she's one of the few researchers that actually focused on Africa and trying to understand the genetic basis of some of these traits that we observe. And so it was very interesting that a lot of studies previously had focused on European populations, and we had a fairly decent idea of the alleles that are associated with lighter pigmentation and the evolution of lighter pigmentation in non-African populations, but no one really understood the genetic basis of pigmentation within Africa. So um, she basically decided, well, we're going to go into Africa, as she'd done for you know, many, many years, and we, are going, we were going to look at this particular trait, among other traits that we're very interested in. So previous studies that I participated in and that I've led involved um, bitter taste perception, which is another variable trait that we see in humans. And we see differences within Africa that we necessarily don't see outside of Africa. Right. So these studies are really, really important because they highlight just how much genetic diversity and phenotypic diversity is within Africa, and if we don't look in Africa, we're not going to really observe this level of variation in populations that live outside this continent. So Africa is a very, very important geographic region. Um, it's the uh, geographic origin of anatomically modern humans. Um, humans evolved in Africa, migrated from Africa, and populated the rest of the world. And so just given how important and how central Africa is to our human evolution, it just seems logical um, to focus on populations across this continent. You went to Africa. Tell us some of the places and the subjects involved in these research. Well, my um, colleagues have traveled to Ethiopia, to Tanzania, um, to Kenya, and they've collected samples in, in those countries. And I've been lucky enough to go to Botswana. Nice. And that's where it was, it was an, an, a tremendous experience. And so we collected a lot of the pigmentation phenotype data in the um, sand hunter-gatherers from southern Africa. So I had a wonderful opportunity to interact with these particular populations that, that still practice traditional lifestyles to a certain degree, mm. although that is starting to shift. Was there a place that you or your group felt we should have gone to or are these places that you just mentioned, Ethiopia, Botswana and the others, are they good enough to make a full representation as far as your research is concerned? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, it's a start. Right. right. So because not a lot of studies have focused on Africa, this is a great beginning to understanding the underlying genetics of this particular trait. And so to be able to sample populations with light pigmentation and other populations with darker pigmentation, and you have the spectrum of pigmentation in between, I think is fantastic. Um, we do need to bolster these studies further. We do need to sample more widely across Africa. And I think for me, um, one area of interest would be West Africa. Um, there are a lot of students at Howard here from West Africa, right. and we see a range of pigmentations on, on campus, and it'd be very, very interesting to, to focus on that region of the continent and try to understand, well, are the same alleles that we found in East Africa and Southern Africa the same as those alleles affecting pigmentation in West African populations and in African Americans? So here's the sweet question for me. <laughs> How does your current findings based on the work that you and your research, fellow researchers have done, change the status quo? Right. Well, what our work shows is that there is a genetic basis to skin pigmentation. And that one thing that was really striking about the study is that the alleles associated with darker pigmentation in Africa are the very same alleles that you find in other populations across the world, for example, in South Asia and in Australo-Melanesia, Australo where there are populations with darker pigmentation. And essentially what our results show is that those alleles that are in these populations outside of Africa were inherited from populations within Africa. So we see this interconnectedness between Africa and other populations across the world. And so the idea that we're judging or creating classifications based on skin color um, for us as scientists is not, um, it's not scientific, it's not biological, it's not rational, it's something that's more social cultural. And so our, our work shows that really classifying based on color is just, it's not very practical right. and not reasonable. Right, so basically we're all 
the same <laughs> in a way. <laughs> well, skin pigmentation is an adaptation to environment, right? right? So we have darker pigmented individuals in Africa, and that's um, protective against UV light. All right, in lower levels of light in regions of the world that have lower levels of light, lighter pigmentation is more advantageous. So these are just differences that we see between different populations that evolved within our particular environment. And so really these differences are just adaptations like the ability to taste a bitter substance um, versus not being able to taste a bitter substance. And so the idea that there are sociological or behavioral differences associated with pigmentation, for me, as a scientist, is not reasonable. Viewers, let's take a short time to what Professor Campbell demonstrate an important aspect of his work. So I'm going to demonstrate um, where we applied the machine to get the um, melanin index information, the phenotype data for the skin pigmentation study. So my graduate student, Brandon, is going to be the model. And I'm just going to demonstrate where on her body we collected the, um, the values. So essentially what we did was that we applied the instrument and we measured skin melanin index on the inside of the arm. So it's this part of the arm that's not likely to be exposed to UV light. That was a, an estimate of the melanin index, meaning the melanin content within an individual's skin. So we wouldn't want to take um, this reading on the outside because of UV exposure, which will darken the skin. We wanted to understand the natural pigmentation of individuals um, that on parts of the skin that haven't been uh, um, exposed to UV light. Now, this research is um, of particular interest to you because of its insights into understanding the genetic basis and evolutionary history of skin pigmentation. Take a little bit of time and talk about, the, you know, that in relation to people, especially darker skinned people that are mostly underrepresented um, in the history of um, human genome and evolutionary studies. Right, and so to include individuals of darker pigmentation, to sort of understand, well, what is the, the underlying genetics that, that are contributing to this particular phenotype? I think we're delving deeper into the variation that we see um, not only within our species, but particularly on the African continent. And it, it's really wonderful that we're expanding our research to include individuals that were previously excluded from this type of research. If you could speak to um, researchers, specifically people in your field of interest in Africa right now, so they could maybe throw their weight as far as resources and you know intellectual property is concerned to help support your work, what would you say to them? Um, Africa is the central region of everything, of humanity. Um, it's, it's very important because, again, we see the highest levels of genetic variation um, across the continent of Africa, higher than in any other region in the world. High levels of phenotypic diversity, whether we're looking at skin pigmentation, bitter taste sensitivity, the ability to digest milk. Um, these are things that are present in Africa, and if we don't study African populations, we're only going to see a small subset of the total genetic and phenotypic variation that exists in this world. So Africa is really central to understanding humanity. So you had said earlier on that this um, process had already begun and you were pulled into it. Right. What basically inspired you to want to partake in this research? Oh, I've always been interested in Africa and populations of African descent. It's, again, because African populations had been highly understudied, it, it's getting a little bit better, but still we're, we're underrepresented in, in this kind of research. And it's exciting to learn more about yourself, understanding the genetics that underlie your particular phenotype. So skin pigmentation is a classic example because it's one of the first things that we see when we meet an individual and try to understand why it is that we're different and um, just trying to understand the underlying biology of that is very, very significant. And sort of to deconstruct um, why it is that we see these differences and that they really don't have a sociological value, they're just adaptations to a given environment. Tell us some of the places and the subjects involved in these research. Well, it's interesting you should ask that because um, I think that sampling more widely across Africa um, particularly West Africa to understand if the alleles that we found in East and Southern Africa are indeed contributing to pigmentation in populations, diverse populations from West Africa. But also what's also interesting 
is that we could sort of try to understand, well, what is the genetic basis of um, health-related traits like vitiligo, right. right? So are there mutations within these particular genes that we've identified through the study that contribute to vitiligo? Are there alternative genes? Are there other types of alleles that have a more subtle effect on skin pigmentation but still contribute nonetheless? So there's a lot more room for discovery within this area of research. So it's very exciting. Got you. So um, if there's anyone out there watching right now that would want to, you know, contribute to your research work or learn more about um, Professor Campbell. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> as far as his work is concerned, All right. how do they get in touch? Well, they can email me. Professor Campbell holds a Bachelor of Science from the University of Toronto in Canada, an M. Science from the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom, an M. Phil and a PhD, respectively, from Columbia University in the USA. His courses of study were Genetics, Biology 200, Evolutionary Medicine, Biology 417, and Directed Readings, Biology 318. The professor's research interests include African genomic diversity, genetic basis of complex traits in human populations, and complex diseases disparities in African Americans. And they send me an email. Um, I'm always interested in people who want to contribute to research. Um, I will write back. So um, I encourage people to, to contact me. Nice talking to you, Professor Campbell. Thank you very much. Thank you.